Hey guys, my name is Michael Watson. I'm a composer and music producer and I'm teaching you through the Ableton Live manual and today we're looking at chapter 20, which is clip envelopes. So I'm going to jump right in. Every clip in Live can have its own clip envelope. Clip envelopes can do anything from representing MIDI controller data to automating and modulating device parameters. So in this video, we're going to first look at how clip envelopes are drawn and edited and then get into the details of the various applications. So if you want to go into your clip editor, double click on the respective clip so, and then you will get this little clip window and at the bottom right you need to hit your E icon and that'll open this envelopes tab. It's similar for an audio clip, double click on your audio clip and it'll also be the E. You'll get your envelope tab. So I'm going to look at both audio and MIDI clips. They're slightly different but I mean the concepts are the same for both. One of the main differences is in MIDI clips if you open up the device chooser so that's this box at the top of your envelope then the top entry in a MIDI clip is called MIDI control and in an audio file the top entry is called clip and I just want to talk about those two quickly. Underneath this so-called device chooser you get your envelope control chooser and this box shows the subcategories of this main box over here. So if that sounds a little confusing, in my last video I was showing you automation and in arrangement view when you edit automation you've also got the same thing here. You've got your device chooser which is choosing your like general category of what you want to automate and then at the bottom it's the specifics. So with this clip in your clip device you can edit these five general controls and I'm going to go into specifics and with the MIDI clip you have a whole lot more to choose from and you can also specify your own values over there. The techniques for editing and um, drawing envelopes is the same for automation. You just hit B on your keyboard to get your pencil or click on this draw mode switch button and you can either draw things in, you can disable your grid to make finer drawings or just temporarily hold alt to bypass the grid. And once you've drawn your general curve, if you hit B again, you can actually change all these breakpoints and move them around. You can curve them using Alt. And to delete this envelope, you just need to control click on the line and um, hit clear envelope. So clip envelopes are non-destructive, which means whatever I draw over here, I'm not actually editing my clip. Um, I'm just giving Ableton Live extra data so that when it plays the clip, it adds these effects to the clip, so the clip itself isn't changed. You can also just pull a different sample in there and the envelope will stay the same, but the clip will change. So if you want to experiment and see what your envelopes sound like on a different clip, you can do that. And if you really like the clip that you've made and you want to turn it into a new clip, you can also render this clip out. You can render it by exporting it or by resampling it, and in arrangement view you'd be consolidating it. Okay, so I'm quickly just going to demonstrate two of these modulation controls. I'm going to start with the sample offset modulation. So, without anything, this is what the clip sounds like. And if I add this envelope to it, so what the sample offset modulation does is that Ableton Live will play back the sample normally at value zero. And every time the value decreases, Ableton Live actually plays back a previous value in the drum sample. Each grid here refers to a 16th note. So if the envelope's going down, it'll loop a previous section, and if it goes up, it'll jump ahead in time. And if you want it to sound like it's kind of slowing down, you need to do a smooth curve. And to do that, you can just draw it in like that and then delete all these different breakpoints. Another really useful one over here is uh, your transposition modulation, which will completely transpose your clip. So for that I'm going to go to this piano sample, and I've really drawn in some random values. And with it. If you've transposed your clip as well here in your clip sample box, which you get from hitting that little waveform in your clip view, if you transpose this up, and you might wonder what is the effect of this clip envelope. Basically it's additive, so it'll take these 14 semitones and either subtract or add what you've done in this clip envelope. So they work together. Another handy tip is if you want the transposition to sound smoother, you might want to change your warp mode. So again in the sample box, which you get from hitting this little audio waveform over there, set your warp mode down here to tones or textures and change your grain size. 
If you choose a smaller grain size, then essentially what you're doing is you're making the audio a higher resolution. I'm not going to go into detail about this. If you do want to know detail about it, you can check out this video on warping algorithms. If you want to scroll through this file while it's playing, just hit Command and Alt and you'll get this little hand and you can pull along. Let me make my sample bigger. You can pull along to toggle the different audio waveforms. You can also go to volume modulation and mute different parts of your sample by just changing the volume to zero at certain points. So as you've experienced, clip envelopes can be used to automate or modulate mixer and device controls. But since mixer and device controls can potentially be controlled by both types of envelopes at the same time, so I got to have this volume automation over here and a separate volume automation over here, this is a potential source of confusion. Because essentially, which one is it supposed to follow? Is it supposed to go down this curve or is it supposed to follow the volume here? But actually, the modulation envelopes, and those are the ones here with modulation after their name, are different from automation envelopes in one important way. Automation envelopes define the value of a control at given point of time. So at this point in time, the volume is going to be minus 14 dB. And at this point in time, the volume is going to be minus 4.301 dB. But modulation envelopes influence this value. So although this envelope will specify this is the volume at that point, this envelope can then take that volume and make it a little bit softer or louder. This difference allows the two types of envelopes to work together when controlling the same parameter. Okay, but what about modulating different controls that are maybe in a device? Well, I can also change the clip envelope with respect to the reverb I just added. I just need to go to my reverb here, so it's the cathedral, and then in, under, and then in my second box I can choose what it is I want to modulate. So let's go with a dry weight knob, since that's just going to be the most obvious. And I can draw on a curve. And as it goes down, it's going to go more dry. So I've decided I don't like the transposition anymore, so I can just control click on there and hit clear envelope. And as you may not know, these little red dots next to the clip and cathedral just indicate that these values have automation on them. You can also decide to only show the adjusted envelopes and that way you're only going to find things in here that have automation. And if you want to see all of them, just hit show all envelopes again. Okay, now all of these techniques that I've described are essentially clip specific. So every time the clip loops, these envelopes will follow. But you can also unlink clip envelopes from clips so that the envelope will play over a period of time, even if this clip is a different length. So let me show you what I mean by creating a fade out for a live set, even though the clip is looping a lot longer than the fade out. So I'm going to go to Mixer and I'm going to go to Track Volume. And then at the bottom here, I'm going to click so that it's unlinked. And now I can decide how long I want my envelope to be if I want it to be only two bars, but I want to make it a lot longer. Let's make it eight bars. This loop brace now is colored and like orangey gray to indicate that this envelope now has its own local loop or its own region, irrespective of the clip length. So I'm going to just start from the top and take my volume down. And even though the drum, the same sample is looping, over time it gets softer and softer and softer. But if I link this, then it has a limited distance and it resets each time the clip loops. Also, a better way to decide on the loop length isn't to drag it out like I did, but you can change the loop length down here and type in 4 to make it 4 bars, or if you wanted to make it really long, you can just type in the respective length, start position, and how long from there. So you can also work the other way around and impose small envelopes onto larger loops. You can also use clip envelopes as LFOs, low frequency oscillators, and you can even play with warp markers. Moving these warp markers around will also elongate your envelopes that you've drawn in, or shorten. And the opportunity for creativity is endless with these envelopes, and I really suggest you just play around and see what works. And with MIDI clips as well, don't forget that you've got a bunch of MIDI effects to play with too. If you want to edit notes, make sure that this is active by hitting this little arrow or anywhere in the title bar. If your envelopes mode is active, you can't edit your MIDI notes. Similarly, when notes mode is active, you can't edit your envelopes.
I hope you guys all learned something new. As always, I appreciate all the positive comments and feedback you guys have given me. And if you do have any, please don't hesitate to leave it below. If you've got any tips for us that I may have missed, I'd love for you to also tell me about it. In the next video, I'm going to be teaching you about working with video in Ableton Live. Have fun learning!